today we're talking about the Falcam quick release camera cage system for the Canon R6 Mark II. This camera cage system has pretty much been the key to my cinema rig for the past eight months. I put off building a cinema rig for a really long time just because I dreaded the thought of having to constantly assemble and disassemble it with all this tightening and loosening of screws. This is why I was so intrigued when Falcam released the quick release camera cage system for a bunch of different cameras, including my Canon R6 Mark II. So I wanna show you how I built my cinema rig around this cage system and some of the pros and cons of using this cage system with this setup. If you are interested in any part of this cinema rig, all the products will be linked in the description box below. So with that, let's get started. For my cinema rig, I like to have one side handle, the top handle, and the monitor mount. For my monitor, I use the seven inch Feel World 4K monitor. That's really bright and works out for me. On the side handle, I like to attach an on-camera shotgun mic. In this case, it's the Rode VideoMic NTG. Then to power everything, I like to use the small rig quick release V-mount battery plate with the small rig V-mount battery. And voila, I got this amazing professional cinema grade camera rig set up in just a few minutes. The only finishing touch I'm missing here is actually some sort of map box, but expect a video on that soon. So what are the pros and cons of using the Falcam cage system with this setup? Let's start with the pros. The first one being the biggest draw of the system, the quick release. I absolutely adore the fact that it just takes a simple holding of a button and sliding in and out these parts to basically assemble and assemble within a fraction of a second. And if you're already built into the Falcam ecosystem, the, a lot of these parts are interchangeable. I believe this specific model actually adapts to F22, F38, and F50. So if you do have some sort of like tripod plate, you can simply slide the bottom of the cage, which has those three mounts, onto it for a quick release for even tripod setups. Next, I really love the build quality of this system. It's made out of some sort of aluminum alloy. In fact, it feels pretty high quality just holding it in my hands. And then there's parts like on the handle that have this wooden finish that make it really comfortable to hold. And all in all, it really feels like a high quality premium product. And because it's so sturdy, I actually like to leave the camera cage on my body because it adds a layer of protection in case I ever do drop it. Knock on wood, that hasn't happened yet. It's also an extremely versatile kit. So you do have two handles that come with it, two side handles, I should say. Then you have that top handle and there's mounting parts all around the cage. So you can even set this up in a manner that you can shoot vertically handheld and have a really nice setup that feels comfortable and ergonomic for you. So this is the configuration I like, but like I said, you can customize it to however you like, and that makes it quite versatile and useful. And the biggest con for the Falcam quick release cage system is it's kind of expensive. When I bought this, I believe it was like $440 and may have even been on sale at the time which is not necessarily cheap. When I look at something like the Small Rig Black Mamba kit, it is significantly cheaper. I'll put the price up here. Granted, it is missing some extra handles and little extra pieces that do come with this camera cage system. But even if you were to add all those pieces up, I still think it would be like sub $400. But what you are paying for in that price is compatibility and ease of mind, knowing that everything works together and is high quality, and of course, for that quick release uh, system that you're buying into. So personally, I think it's all worth it. Next, let's talk the Feel World monitor. What I appreciate about the Feel World monitor is it is a seven inch screen, so it's large, meaning it does two things for me. One, it makes it very easy to frame shots because I can see every detail, and it's a lot you know, bigger and brighter than even the back LCD screen of my camera. And two, it makes me look super professional. When I do bring this monitor out to client shoots, they always kind of mention how big it is and how cool my setup looks. And I think that does add a little bit of um, quality and you know, it's just client perceptions, right? They wanna make sure that they trust you and, and look, I'm investing in my gear. I look like someone who actually cares about my video quality and so therefore I'm able to capture high quality content and you know, give a better client experience as well. On that note, it also is an extremely bright monitor so many monitors I know, like the Ninja V, only have about a thousand nits of brightness. And if you're shooting outdoors, that's not enough. So I did want a monitor that can go pretty bright. And this Field World one goes up to 2000 nits, which is more than enough when you're shooting on a bright sunny day outside. Then of course you have LUT support, which I think 
is super valuable, especially if you shoot something like log or raw on your cameras. Instead of having to stare that at that flat, gray, unsaturated, uncontrasted image, you can actually apply the conversion LUT that you have from, you know, whatever Canon or camera that you use and you import it to the monitor and you can overlay that on your image. You can basically see the final image on your camera which is amazing because once again, you can show this to clients, you're not showing them an ungraded image, you're showing them pretty much what the final image is gonna look like, which looks a lot better. Not to mention it's more fun to look at the final image and you can judge things like exposure a little bit better when you use the LUTs. Then of course you have some bonus features, but this isn't a full review of the monitor, although I am thinking about maybe doing a full review of the Field World monitor. And if you wanna see that, just let me know in the comments below. But some of the issues with this Field World monitor once again, it actually has to do with the size. So seven inches is fantastic, like I said, because it's such so much screen real estate, it's really nice to stare at. But if you're trying to be low key or you wanna keep your setup pretty light, seven inches is kind of obnoxious. Like you can't just hide with a seven inch monitor, you know, people are gonna notice it. It does get a lot of eyes. So I have used this, for example, at a wedding. And, you know, people sometimes can get a little bit intimidated because of my setup looks so damn big and professional. So depending on the type of shooter you are, I think seven inch monitors can be overkill, but I really think it works out for me. But I am looking to buy a second monitor that'll be a five inch that hopefully can still do 2000 nits of brightness. Then my biggest qualm with this monitor is that the port positions are really bad. All the ports for HDMI, power, and things like that are on the bottom of the monitor, which isn't necessarily a bad idea is that they made the, the monitor mount where you screw onto so close to the DC in that most monitor mounts aren't very compatible with this monitor. I did have the small rig monitor mount and when I used it with this monitor, it completely blocks the DC in, meaning that it's useless if I wanna set it up with the small rig battery. It's not gonna be a big issue when you use those Sony MPF batteries, but it's just annoying how the monitor mount is blocking the power. It just seems like a design flaw that shouldn't exist, but it is something worth noting if you're gonna use that DC, DC in, you wanna make sure you have a, a monitor mount that works. And luckily I can sort of configure the Falcam one to make it compatible enough, but it is still just like something I have to work around, which is annoying. And then small con here, it's an eight bit monitor, not a 10 bit. I do shoot in a C-Log3, which is a 10 bit color profile. So I don't get the full uh, color depth when I'm previewing the image on this monitor, but it's close enough, still does the job. Uh, I just am looking for something with 10 bit in the future. Next, let's talk the small rig V-mount battery plate and the battery. Pros of these, easy to set up. So I do appreciate how the small rig quick release V-mount battery plate is a quick release system as well. So it really matches well when it comes to the Falcam quick release system. I can quickly install the cage and then I can adjust it to you know, be more balanced by sort of extending it out. And if I need access to my camera monitor, I can also simply loosen a, a knob and move the battery out of the way, get the screen out, move the battery back in and lock it back in place in no time. So it's a very easy to use, very functional and super awesome camera battery mount system to use. It also has a ton of ports, which I really appreciate. So you can power a lot of other devices. It has a USB-C, USB-A, two sort of DC ins. One is like eight volt, the other is 12 volt. And then you have your DTAP. So you have five power sources available. And talking about the USB-C port, that is actually how you can also charge this. So I actually use a high power USB-C cable with my Mac uh, brick, MacBook brick which is like, I think 90 Watts. And I can charge this thing really fast with that setup, which I really find super convenient because I know for other V-mount batteries, you need a specific charger, which is cumbersome. But with this, you can use your existing cables to charge it, which is super awesome. Now, the only issue I have with the small rig uh, quick release V-mount battery plate is that for some reason, even though it claims to be Arca Swiss compatible, it's not Arca Swiss compatible with the Arca Swiss <laughs> Say that a few times quickly. It's not compatible with the Arca Swiss on the Falcam quick release cage. And I've used the Arca Swiss on the cage to mount it to different tripods that I use that are Arca Swiss. I honestly think it's the fault of small rig and it might just be that they want you to use their proprietary cages 
with this, you know, V-mount battery plate, which is fair, annoying, but I understand it. So to actually use the uh, battery plate with the cage system, I have to use their little adapter, but it can get a little bit loose over time during the day of the shoot. So I have to constantly take it off, re-tighten re it and make sure it, it's secure, um, just so that nothing bad happens, like this, you know, quick release plate falling off. So that's my cinema rig. And trust me, I know it's not perfect, but that's no fault of the Falcam quick release cage system itself. It's honestly a peripherals issue, which just means you wanna make sure you got quality peripherals that can work with this cage system. And so far, even though I have subpar peripherals, it works fantastic. And I actually still have a lot of compatibility and allows me to take full use of this camera cage system. So no complaints. So for anyone looking for a starting point for their cinema rig, I honestly believe the Falcom quick release cage system is a fantastic starting point. I can't stress enough how convenient the quick release system is. Basically, I can just have the camera cage on the body most of the time to, for security reasons. And then whenever I do need to rig it up, I just slide the handle on, slide the top handle, and I'm ready to go. Then when I do want to fully rig it out, it's very simple. Slide on the side handle, slide the top handle, get that monitor mount, slide the monitor, add that quick release uh, small rig V-mount battery play with the V-mount, and I'm ready to go in like three minutes flat versus those other cages where it would take a considerable amount of time to build it out from scratch. And then if I wanted to take it off, it's going to take that time again to disassemble it. And of course, the customization of this thing means you can have it any way you like. So if you don't even like this setup, you can definitely make it better and improve upon it yourself. If you wanna pick up any of these products I mentioned in this video, don't forget the links are in the description for you to check out. So let me know in the comment section if you're thinking about getting this camera cage system for yourself. If you like this video, you can check out my gear review playlist here to see what other gear I use and recommend for filmmakers. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.